guess that's probably what it's like for my wife. Um, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> pretty, pretty, pretty bad. Um, okay, uh, okay, so ladies and gentlemen, um, I'm going to call up any logic. In fact, I already have it called up here. And uh, but I will uh, I will close it and I will um, pretend like I am uh, calling it up from scratch so that uh, I experience something similar to you. TAs prepare for deployment. Okay. Um, okay. So I'm going to go uh, invoke any logic. Any logic is a simulation package for building system science models. It, it supports, it's called, it's sort of foremost claim to fame as impersonal to its name, um, that it supports building models in any of several different traditions into weaving them together. Okay, um, when you call up any logic, you'll be presented, unless you're You've used it previously with a splash screen like this. Do, do you folks see that? Okay. Um, if you do, um, I would invite you to explore this at a later time, but, but there's a little minimize button up here, and um, you, can, uh, you can press that to, um, to minimize that, that window. And you should see something like, Roughly like this. Do you see that? Okay, TAs, uh, please please monitor and intervene for the better. Okay. Um, okay. So what we're going to do now is we're going to download one of the models I placed on the site. Okay. So I don't know if you remember, but we had earlier noted that there's a. Um, a site uh, associated with uh, with this boot camp. It's this one here, Data and System Science 2018 Mat. And if you open that, you will find a set of resources um, that include models. Uh, and I'm going to go to that right now. Um, here's participant resources, and there's something called example models. Do you see that? Example models. Okay, I would like you to download, there's a model there that's called GIS and Food Environment. Do you see that? It's at the top? Okay, now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you my first out of my bag of tricks, okay? This is like the, the, the worst of the bag of tricks, so, so forgive me, okay? So in order to open the model, you can do one of two things. Either you can right-click on it and do download. I, I, I think on Max it's what option click. Help help me. Control click. Control, Control click. click. Okay. Um, okay, uh, and you should be able to do download through that. Or if you if you're not able to tell it to download through that so-called context menu, you can do this. You can click on it. I think you may need to double click, and you'll see something horrible. Although maybe better than me at least. Um, but uh, you can see something horrible there in the front, um, uh, beyond me. And, and, and that consists of this. You can press this little download. There's a little download thing um, up here, which you can press. And that will also bring it to your computer. Okay, And then you can close, the, close that abomination. Um, OK. So ladies and gentlemen. That will download this model to your computer. The model, the model is, uh, that you just downloaded, it, it characterizes a complex system. It's, it's, a, it's a model that depicts a complex system. And there are several others on here that we'll be going through in the course of the week and that we'll add to. Um, for example, an opioid-related one that um, uh, we'll be taking a look at. This one is one focused on the food and physical activity environment. So having downloaded it, we're now going to open it. Okay? So to open it, we go back to our any logic and we will do file open. We'll engage in opening behavior. Okay? Okay. So if you do file open, 
you can then navigate to your downloads and find that model which you downloaded, which for me lies in my downloads folder there. And I am going to say OK to open it. OK, TAs, stand vigilant. Um, try to intervene if you can, OK, um, to, to try to help people. Who needs uh, TA help? OK, well, that's, that's awesome. Um, that, that's, that's, that's great. Um, OK, um, so um, who, who needs uh, additional TA? <laughs> OK. <laughs> OK, OK. This is great. This is great. Um, we, um, we have an auction at the end, Christine? Yes, I guess. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, Okay, uh, so ladies and gentlemen, we've just opened a model, and what you see uh, is a uh, is a depiction um, of a uh, geographic area, which uh, some of you may recognize. Any uh, any any of those from down under recognize the fair city? Melbourne. It's Melbourne. Yeah, Melbourne, Australia. Um, Okay, so um, this is a model which is uh, depicted in a GIS uh, setting. This is a system science model. It's a system science model uh, in that it, it depicts um, some situation in the world, um, not in terms of just observables, but in terms of characterizing the processes that underlie it. Its focus here lies in trying to understand the impact of aspects of the, um, the, the built environment, particularly the food environment, and aspects of availability of parks on uh, overweight and obesity. Okay? Um, so it's set in a geographic context. Um, uh, so, so often we're interested, as in critical realism, in context and mechanism leading associated with outcome. But what's most notable here is not this depiction right now, but how it represents things. So I'd like you to go over, you'll notice on the left-hand side here, we have a depiction of the pieces of the model. And uh, as in a complex system, um, it's, it's not those pieces in isolation, but their relationship to, with each other that give rise to the whole. But I'd like you to double-click on person. And if you double click on person, you will see something that um, will variously uh, uh, fascinate and frighten you. Okay? Um, and uh, specifically, you'll see here a, uh, a theory of personhood articulated in a language. Um, uh, that is uh, that is a uh, popular one for agent-based modeling. And you'll notice you could scroll around with this. Um, by double-clicking up here on person, you can actually see a somewhat bigger view. You could zoom in on that. Um, and by double-clicking it again, we can go back to the divided, uh, divided view. I'm going to enlarge it. And I'll just note that um, here... Uh, we see that individuals uh, have a certain behavior over time, so they have, a, they have a, a weight in kilograms, and although I won't go into the details of language here, we'll see more of it in the course of the week, that weight in kilogram is affected by their energy intake and energy expenditure, but both basal and, and uh, physical activity related energy. Um, individuals uh, engage in food seeking behavior um, in which they head to supermarkets or to convenience stores um, uh, so so they may engage in, um, in heading to the supermarket and, and purchase uh, uh, healthy produce and um, and other elements or they can head to a convenience store and eat floaties and Tim Tams and meat pies. I believe is, is what I'm told. Um, although I think floaties are from Adelaide. Um, 
Uh, and uh, having gone to the convenience store the, and, and uh, reached their fill, they can transit back home. You'll notice there's some decision making involving eating a meal. An individual chooses between the types of foods that they have available and engages in food seeking behavior um, uh, if, if food is, is not available. They go shopping for food. And while we're not going to get into the details here, um, students could help you explicate, there's actually decision making process that's evolved in determining if they head to the supermarket or to a convenience store, which reflects their preferences. You notice up here on the left, the far left, there's a preference for convenience store meals. So if they have this propensity, a certain hankering for Tim Tams, uh, for example, or meat pies, um, this will tend to be higher. Um, and that's one of the things which directs them to the supermarket, but another, uh, or a convenience store, another thing is the relative placement of those resources. If it's convenient to get to the convenience store, they'll head there um, with greater likelihood than if it were further away. And so they're balancing some understanding of their location relative to the nearest resource. Beyond that, there's some, there's some um, uh, information retained on how they're located relative to the nearest park. And that affects their physical activity, um, moderate to vigorous physical activity, as captured up here. My goal here is not to teach you this whole language. That's a separate group here. My goal here, though, is to say that this model has a certain theory captured about how people behave with respect to um, factors that affect their weight. Now, this theory is not a privileged one. It's, it, 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 the fact that the model depicts it doesn't say the model is assuming that it's correct. But the fact that we can depict this theory um, explicitly gives us some advantages. One advantage is we could share it with another person. If there's another person familiar with this, we could give them this description. And they could basically know what, our, our, what we're positing on a, on a um, temporary basis with respect to people's behavior. This is sort of a theory of personhood in terms of factors affecting their weight. And, and by sharing it with them, maybe they can help find flaws in it, or critique it, or challenge it, or, or in fact, uh, enrich it. Suggest, well, you really need to uh, further represent their social network, something along those lines. But secondly, the fact that we've captured this in this model um, in this sort of way not only allows us to communicate our theory, it allows us to understand its logical consequences. That's what I meant earlier when I said it operationalizes our theory. In what way? Well, it turns out that this depiction that we see before us, it is a precise set of positive features of positive theory. It's a precise theory. And because it's precise, if we were to drill down, there's very specific assumptions made here. We can ask the simulation software to tell us what its logical consequences over time in terms of people's behavior. So if we go and we, we double click on this again. If yours doesn't make that sound, that's okay. Um, okay, and um, we could go back to this. We can actually go say, okay, go figure. That's our theory of personhood. People are placed in a context. If you double click on Maine, you can see they're placed in the fair city of Melbourne. So are parks all around Melbourne at their actual locations, and so are supermarkets at their actual locations. They're placed at a geographically accurate um, uh, places. We could go say, okay, tell me the consequence. So given this theory of how people seek food and how their weight changes over time and how they choose what to eat, if we, as a working hypothesis, assume that, what's its implication over time in terms of people's weight changes over time or in terms of the relationships we should see empirically between where people live and, and their weight or, or their distance to a grocery store and their weight. So if we go and we go click on baseline here, where it says baseline, there's a set of scenarios. These are scenarios. They're, 
they're sometimes used the term experiments. Um, they allow us to run this model with different particular assumptions involving the theory. So if we right click on this one that says baseline, a TA can help with that. You could also use this button up here, and we could say run. Now we'll run this model, okay? Now, this model is one that does depend on internet access. So if you don't have internet access, get that TA working, and, and they can help you. So here I have, uh, have this uh, model depicted, and I can say run. And what it's going to actually show me is going to be behavior situated here in Melbourne. You'll notice that there are individuals. They, they um, uh, are, are shown here. Unfortunately, oh, you know what has changed? Yeah, yeah, it's changed the order. TIs, remember this? Any logic 8 changed the order of the, uh, by which things are placed. So th they actually have a head behind there. I know right now they look kind of like ant eggs or something. But, um, let, me, let, me, let me just uh, get, get this done. Um, so here are houses. Um, these are supermarkets. These big, uh, these big stores. These are convenience stores in green. The the green squares are parks, um, and uh, and we have individuals moving around. And you'll notice that some individuals have a high propensity to visit nearby uh, convenience stores. And if you were to slow this model down, what you would actually find is that maybe I'll I'll, I'll just do this right now. Um, uh, that actually people are traveling along thoroughfares in order to, to reach their destination. So to secure their supply of meat pies, for example, this, um, this individual is, is seeking comfort food at this nearby convenience store in the Richmond area. And um, that individual's girth is actually affected over time. So uh, you'll notice some individuals uh, exhibit a more gracile character. Um, so they're, in other words, they're skinnier. Um, uh, this individual is partaking of, of the meat pies at this, uh, at this convenience store to, to, to its detriment. Um, and he's heading down this major street and over. So individuals are moving around in the space according to that theory. They're seeking out food. And over time, their weights are affected. So, ladies and gentlemen, um, uh, within this context, we have these individuals circulating, and um, they are doing so in a way that is exposing them to uh, these um, uh, to, to, to the um, uh, to the particulars of the food. Now, uh, TAs, so I'm going to have to ask because I'm actually used to a different interface. Ah, here we go. Um, so, ladies and gentlemen, if you note on the lower right of your screen, there should be something that says Toggle Developer Panel. It's a little thing that looks like a, a, a settings icon. Um, so it's down here in the lower right. Do you see that? So if you click on that, this little panel will open up. It tells us our current time. And you'll notice that we can drag down up here. Um, there's a, a little drop down. And I'd like you to drop down and, and, and pull it down. There should be something in here called population. Um, it's, in mine, it's just before foot scray. Um, okay. I have to say, as a country, Australia has the best names. <laughs> it's hands down, hands down. It's very impressive. Um, so ladies and gentlemen, there's a, there should be a population there. And if you choose population, you'll notice this depicts at the level of each person what the situation is. So this is a, an individual is not seeking food. Um, uh, their weight is over here. They're, they're losing weight over time. Um, if we use right click, um, oh sorry, no, you just click and drag over. You'll, you'll notice that this has... This individual has a high propensity for, um, uh, for, for supermarket meals, uh, but also eats a lot of convenience store meals. And over time, their convenience store meals are, are changing. They're, they're eating over time. And their weight is evolving over time. 
according to a certain trajectory. Do you see? So um, I went and I clicked. So how did I do this? I click on here and I can kind of drag around. And I clicked on weight. And over here, there's this little graph. And I can see their weight as it evolves over time. So this is an individual who did go through a gain of some significance in terms of, kil of kilograms of weight early on. But they seem now to be hovering around um, around this weight. Okay, they've uh, they've been uh, they're continuing actually to gain weight here. Um, so okay, I, I guess those meat pies are are doing them damage. Um, okay, so ladies and gentlemen, this is one individual. We we could go to other individuals by. Um, by going here, choosing other individuals, and we can see other individuals' life stories. This depicts an individual's trajectory over time at a fine range of way, at a way that's, that, uh, that depicts their specific biography and history, where they've gone for food shopping. Um, over here is how many convenience store meals they have remaining in their larder and how many, uh, how many supermarket meals. This is a person who's eating quite healthy. They have, they've eaten many more supermarket meals than convenience store meals. Despite a, a balance of preference for convenience store meals, probably it's because they live near a supermarket. Their weight is correspondingly somewhat lower. This is a depiction of each individual's life biography, as it is, that's playing out here. But more than that, we can go up to the next level. I'm going to press this button that says up to next level. And we can go look at the neighborhoods as a whole. So we still have this individual here as well as others. I'm going to scroll down and look up above. Okay? And you'll notice that there are some patterns that are being arced out. At this point, I've only simulated it with 10 people. I think I'm going to to go run it with somewhat more so I could see richer patterns here. So I'm going to close that and I'm going to say that I'm going to run a medium-sized population here. Um, if we do it with too big a population, we'll, uh, we'll be needing to rely heavily on the network. So I'm just speeding it up. I just, uh, you folks don't have to, but I said run medium-sized population. Now we're running it with more individuals here. And if I scroll up, what you'll see is that we can summarize what's going on at an individual level across the population. Um, so here we depict each dot is an individual. Uh, their X, the X location of that dot is indicates what fraction of their meals have been eaten at a convenience store, and their weight is shown uh, on the y-axis. So if a, if a given meal, or if a given dot representing a person, um, for example, is located at 0.2, it indicates approximately 20% of their meals were eaten at convenience stores, and they have a weight of something like 0.86. Now, what do you see from this pattern? What does it suggest? If, if, if you were to see this pattern, what is it, what is it suggesting? Is there any sort of association? What, what is that association indicating? Is there an association between eating convenience store meals and weight? Okay. Is the association a positive one? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, and so we see this in this band, right? It's a, it's a fairly tight association. Where did that association come from? Did I, did I tell the model to assume that association directly? No. I impose it? No. Where did this come from? From the model. Yeah. It, so it arose. So what determines their weights? Well, it's not like I told it what to assume about their weight. Their weight's evolving. It's, what is it evolving according? It's evolving according to what they're eating and how much physical activity they're getting. Physical activity involves basal metabolic activity and then moderate and vigorous physical activity from parks. So it's affected by their proximity to parks, but it's also affected by their energy intake. 
and their energy intake is shaped by what they eat. And what they eat is shaped by their preference as well as their location in space, right? Where they live and, and how close other resources are. So this, the fact that there's an association here, it comes out of the model, but it's not pre-programmed into the model in any direct way. Rather, it's resulting from this complex interaction of the, of the assumptions in my theory with the particulars of the environment, my theory of personhood um, here, how this theory interacts with what's available in the environment, park location, uh, location of supermarkets and convenience stores. Let's, let's continue to look, look above, though. Here's a, here's a graph showing a relationship between grocery store, the distance a person lives from a grocery store, and their weight in kilograms. Um, if there's an association there, it's less clear. It certainly doesn't seem to be a, a, a positive one. Um, uh, if, if, if there's anything there, it's a, it's a very uh, broad one. How about, how about this one? How about looking at, on the x-axis here, each dot is again a person, um, and actually I think at a particular time. Here, the x-axis indicates um, how, what's the ratio of distance? Given where that person lived, what's the ratio of the distance for where they live to the nearest grocery store compared to the nearest convenience store. So if, for example, that's a ratio of 10, that means they have to go 10 times as far to the nearest grocery store as they would to the nearest convenience store. What is that suggesting in terms of an association? If, if we look at that on the x-axis and their weight is on the y-axis, what? Right. If, if you're, relatively speaking, if you're closer to a grocery store um, when compared to the nearest convenience store, um, you're going to tend to have lower weight than if you're living far from the nearest, uh, uh, nearest grocery store compared to the nearest convenience store. If you, if you have to go a really far different distance to the nearest grocery store, that will tend to lead to you to make a lot of decisions for those milk and bread runs and those those purchases of of convenience store things when you get home late and you just need some food, you know you're going to go get that Twinkie from the nearest convenience store. Um, so so the further we are from the nearest grocery store compared to the nearest convenience store, the more it will tend to bring up our weight. Did, did we pre-program this, this association in there directly? No, it results again from this complex interaction of all these different factors. And similarly, uh, in terms of preference, this is their preference for meals from convenience stores versus, versus their weight. What is this saying? Yeah, they have a high preference. It tends to be somewhat higher, but... Um, but you know, there's there's a large area where it's not that uh, not that big a difference. Okay, now um, we could do a similar thing with park distance, etc. But I think you see the picture. I think you see the picture. Now I'm going to have one final change. It's time for break. Okay, we'll we'll take about five minutes to finish up. <laughs> Thank you, Christine. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen. I had argued that a model like this operationalizes a theory. We have this theory depicted in the model here. It's a fairly articulated theory. It's a theory that could be criticized. By putting it into an explicit form invites critique because I can give it to someone who also understands this language and they could say, wait a minute, you've forgotten this or you're ignoring this or why do you consider there's such a small effect of parts? You know, people have found that parks also impact this or what have. A model that's articulated explicitly has a certain value in terms of inviting 
feedback and suggestions and critique. It, in short, it, it opens up for collective refinement. But more than that, I argued that by putting it into this form, it's operationalized. And we can see what its consequences are over time. In fact, we've seen this. We've seen its consequences at an individual level, but also at a level in terms of the patterns. And you notice that this data generating process induces patterns, associations from the world. These are associations induced by this data generating process. Are those associations forced by the model? Well, they emerge from the model from this complex interaction of factors, right? I didn't put this directly in there. Rather, weights tend to be higher when you have to when 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 you have higher energy intake compared to your energy consumption. But this all depends, you know, where grocery stores are located in Melbourne rel relative to parks and to convenience stores, how big this impact will be. This emerges from a whole set of factors that are just way too complex for us to think through in your head. At least for me to think through in my head. This emerges from it. It's a pattern that emerges from it. It's a pattern like patterns we observe in the world. We can do a survey out there in the world using traditional tools, using Ethica, as we'll see this afternoon, to capture this relationship. And we can compare it to what comes out of the model, right? We could collect data from the world for a similar measure and look at people's weight. Or we could do it for grocery store distance or weight, a fraction of meals eaten in convenience stores versus weight, etc. And we could, we could compare the model's predictions with what we observe from the world, right? And we could test, is it consistent? Is it consistent with what we observe from the world? And we could therefore challenge the model and say, wait a minute, you're not capturing this feature of the world. It's not consistent. Your theory has fallen flat. Great, we've learned that our theory does not measure up in a way we wouldn't have without a model. If that theory had been in our head, we wouldn't have been able to know. It's inconsistent with some evidence. But because we're able to say what the logical consequences of our theory are in terms of things we might observe from the world, and then compare data from the world against this, we can spot more quickly if our theory is off base, if it needs revamping, if it needs refinement. Do you see what I'm saying? We can challenge our theory more closely if we have data from the world. Ah, where we're going with data science. But our model captures theory about the world. But it's more than that, ladies and gentlemen, and this is going to be the, 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 the final kicker before you're released to, <laughs> to caloric intake. <laughs> I'm just starting my breakfast here. Uh, OK, so ladies and gentlemen, let us now examine. We stop that. Close that window. You'll notice that we could run an alternative scenario that involves extra levels of physical activity, perhaps as instigated by a physical activity program. Maybe it's the walking school bus, or maybe it's a program associated with um, getting, um, getting kids extra activity at school, or maybe it's uh, um, peer support groups for those seeking to, um, to engage in higher physical activity. So we're going to right-click on this one with walks, and we'll run it, and we could run that. And we could say, okay, if we put into place this, this level of, of physical activity, extra level of physical activity, what would the impact be on, on people's weight patterns over time? Okay? And you'll notice that people are moving around in this neighborhood. Um, once again, that's, uh, that's causing some... Um, some patterns here and we could go study you know um, how has this changed things to what degree has it lowered the weight relative to what we saw before we're positing here that with extra level there's extra levels of physical activity coming in and you'll notice that and I won't go into it in detail because the food the food awaits um, that it induces changes in the output. It induces changes in these associations. Why does it induce change in the associations? Deposit, there's greater levels of physical activity, say, 
and those who live near parks. Why would that induce change? Well, it, it ripples through because physical activity is going to lower their, it's going it's to raise their energy, energy expenditure. That's going to lead to, for, for a given energy intake, it's going to lead to a lower wage. And, and as a result, it's going to lead to these patterns being different because patterns here are summarizing for a given individual um, the ratio of their, their distance to a convenience store, and a grocery store compared to a convenience store and, and compared to their weight. It's going to induce a different pattern. So you'll notice the important point here is that changing the data generating that, that our intervention, having people walk more, changes the data generating process. It changes the underlying process which is giving rise to this data. And it's changing the data that's a, that would be observed under this circumstance. Now in this case, the associations are not wildly different, but they are different enough that they have uh, altered the, the, um, the particulars of that distribution. Alternatively, now there are some versions of this model. I could go place, place grocery stores around Melbourne. I'm, I'm scattering them. I double click on the map and I can place a new grocery store at that location. So I'm going to scatter in healthy grocery stores and also, and in fact, this one right here, this poor individual who, is, who has been besotted by meat pies, um, I'm going to place grocery stores in high density around his domicile, okay? Um, and why does that affect things? Can anyone say, given the theory that we articulated, this theory, why does it affect things that I scatter grocery stores around his domicile. He's now more likely to go to the grocery stores compared to convenience stores because they're more convenient. Remember, his decision-making is based on that. So now you have all these grocery stores around, and I would argue that that as well induces these changes uh, in... In, in terms of the patterns that we see. You'll notice a different sort of pattern emerging here as a result of that intervention. Interventions change things. Interventions change the data generating process. They change the associations that are observed. And models like this allow us to investigate the impact of these counterfactual interventions, these things that change the underlying process. These concepts that we've just explored will be absolutely central to this week in terms of understanding models depict underlying processes. They allow us to examine an individual's trajectories over time. They allow us to reason through the collective implications of those assumptions by, by operationalizing a theory. And they allow us to examine the degree to which patterns in the world are consistent with our theory by seeing whether the patterns that emerge from our theory and our model jive with the patterns of the world, and they allow us to examine the impact of interventions as they affect an individual and as they affect the patterns we see from the world. These are major motivations for system science, and they're major motivations that can be enhanced by linkage to data science. And there's some of the major motivations about why data science needs system science. Okay? So the food awaits. And there's all new food. <laughs> thank you very much. And thank you to Christine for, for arranging all that. Your taping or recording has stopped. It Okay, that's okay. I'm recording it another way too. So that's, that's so it did stop. It did. It did. Okay. 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 That's probably probably uh, people are happy about that. Okay.